Is Banks. Banks. You can find me in the heart of the city. You could tell me that I could have done more. You could show me why I'm here, what I'm feeling. All I know is all I know. And ladies and gentlemen, we are back. After a week's vacation, actually, we did film an episode last week, and it was uh, <laughs> it was thrown in the trash by Spotify. I didn't I didn't record my audio the right way, so we had to use the audio recorded from the Skype call. And uh, Banks was on a bender. <laughs> yeah, you fucking you blew it. Don't try to shift the blame to me. You blew it. Honestly, you... the conversation. I thought the conversation was great. I liked what we talked about. But we, if we wanted to upload it, we would have had to upload just my audio and your Skype side of it. So my my audio would be crispy, clean. Your just sounded like shit. So Banks, was- I got to jump right into this because okay, so you have Coffeezilla and you have Muta who are uploading, I guess, an exposed video on one of your sponsors, Rubets. It's like a it's a online crypto. I hate casino. that. Why do you guys keep throwing the S on it? It's Rubet. Rubet, Muda, whatever. Muda's video. I just I recently watched Muda's video. Ru, it's not Rubets. It's Rubet. So what I did is I watched these videos, right? And I'm just trying to figure out like really where this is going and what this is about. And that's been first, my, that's been the question of the hour for me. Honestly, is what's the issue? And well, j- just so people know, I, I'm getting some heat on Drum Alert. Like, why aren't you covering this story? I don't really know necessarily what it's about yet. I spent three hours on the phone with coffee. I spent at least a 30 minute call with Muta and I don't really get it. I guess the, the main thing I've grabbed from this is that you guys are working with a casino and then like in the affiliate tax or the affiliate uh, TOS, it basically says how affiliates works. Uh, affiliates, which would be you guys, right? I would assume the people that are sponsored by this online crypto casino, you get a percentage based on the average of your fans losing money in the casino. Absolutely so, false. Untrue. Okay. Well, Absolutely ex- wrong. Ex- explain it. Okay. How much money? So the, so the if way I the affiliate deposit a thousand dollars. If, if you were to, if you were to, de- if you were to deposit a thousand dollars and go on to make ten million dollars, I would make the exact same amount of money if you had used my code as if you deposited a thousand dollars and lost the entire thousand dollars. I would make there would be no difference. Yeah, that's I'm not exactly incenti- what I said though. I'm not that's incentivized. Not exactly what I said though. That's not exactly what you said. Yeah, yeah, it's based on. You said I'm, inc- the, I'm incentivized on people losing. It's not true. Yes, there's, because there's nothing. How- there's nothing connected to me earning money based on somebody losing. Okay, well, let me talk. <coughs> let me talk now. All yep. right. So basically, what they're saying, right, is if you take a thousand people and a thousand people put a thousand dollars each into this casino. There is a average number of how much money will be lost, right? Just on average. Some people win, some people lose, but there's an average amount of money that's, that the house that, will win. Okay, okay, ready, ready. That's gambling in general, though. That's not specific to right, Rubet. Right, that's, So right. If, if Rubet, and in that sense, what, where you're going with this, if Rubet's a scam, then my bookie's a scam, you're sponsored no, by no, my no, bookie, no, right? No, 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 no. I'm not calling yes. him a scam. I'm not okay, calling okay. them a scam. No, 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 no. But that's that's the issue with this shit, right? People take this shit and spin it and fucking start throwing the word scam around and all this. Listen, gambling is anybody, gambling. Any, yeah, listen, listen. That's that's where I'm going with it. A, anyone who wants to have the debate on gambling and the morality of gambling and promoting gambling, I'm here for that conversation all day. I'll talk about that all fucking day long. But fact of the matter is, with this whole Rubet thing, um, first I'd like to make it extremely clear myself mike aiden and rice we did a one month stint with them we did a one month like campaign with rubet we went we did everything 100 percent legitimately we went to mexico you're not allowed to play in the u.s we we flew to mexico uh we played for mexico and followed all the all the guidelines and played 100 percent legit we were 100 percent transparent with our audience about a we're getting fucking paid a lot of money for this and b if you gamble, you're going to lose. Like, there's peep the VODs, go back. I mean, we've been brutally transparent about that. And they and we were we were upfront with them from the beginning. Like, yo, we're going to let people know 100% what the deal is. And they were completely fine with that. So, I mean, again, if, my, if Rubet's a scam, then Stake is a scam. And, I mean, it's like... The, like, there's people right now on Twitch gambling on all these, like, casino slot 
websites, like even still promoting their codes and sponsored by, you know, you know what I mean? No, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but like th- there are much bigger fucking fish to fry than me. I stream the thing six times. Well, I guess the point that they're again, back to the percentage. And, and, and from what I, and from what I've gathered too, Mudahar, you know, f- some ordinary gamers is like, I have no issue with, with gambling. I really have no issue with, People who participate in gambling getting deals with casinos and being sponsored by these casinos as long as they're transparent about it. You know what I mean? As long as so, it's, then why are they making a that's six what, that's, series against you? That, it's not against me, Keem. Why are you fucking spinning it's it like that? It's against you. It's against Nelk, no. It's, it's not against, against me. It's not against me whatsoever. I was mentioned one time in it because I'm I played on the fucking site. Why? Because it's gonna get clicks, Keem. That's the only thing I can fucking I can see in it. I think that I think that their beef is with Rubet. I think that CoffeeZilla has a specific um, thing with Steve will do it. That's how it all started. He said it himself in part one. You watched the fucking video. He said, I was watching Steve will do it videos. And and, and I started asking myself, how is Steve spending a million dollars a a YouTube video? How is that possible? How does the economics Mm -hmm. make sense? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's figure out where his his source of income is. Rubet. Let's let's connect the dots. They do this like the you you know Coffeezilla's fucking shtick. It's like the fucking the pins in the board and the fuck this guy and this mysterious person. And it's like sometimes Keemstar things aren't that fucking deep. Sometimes just because you want something to be a scheme or a scam doesn't mean it fucking is. And well, I don't bro, fully understand I, I, it. Bro, other I than- own I own part of fucking Phase Clan. I've been in this game for fucking ten plus years. Everything I've done is completely fucking legitimate. I've you know what I mean. I I. Early on in, in in my shit, like I, you know what I mean. You learn along the way, but ten years deep, bro. I'm not fucking stupid. I have all my people triple checking all this shit, making sure everything's cool, good to go. I fucking go to Vegas frequently. I I bet on every fucking football game, every every NFL Sunday. I participate in this shit. I enjoy it. I get uh, I get uh, what what's the fucking word? I don't know. I'm I'm like running off, but it's like, it's just fucking annoying. Even you, that's like so annoying that you just said that. Like they're making, why are they making a six part series against me? They're, they're not dude. What the fuck are you saying? Like, that's annoying, bro. Well, I don't understand it. I was yes, on the phone, neither for, do I. I was on the I, phone I, for coffees with Coffeezilla for three hours. Now, granted, we were talking about everything under the sun, not just this. But I also talked to Mudahar, and I don't get it. Like, I okay, you guys are promoting a game. To be honest thing. with you, I talked to Muda. I talked to Muda for an hour and a half. Um, the conversation honestly started heated because honestly, my only thing was I was like, okay, whatever, say whatever the fuck you want. Again. If anyone wants to have a debate about the morality of gambling, promoting gambling, having gambling sponsorships or deals, I'm fucking here for that. Keemstar, you're guilty of it. Ha- fucking Logan I'm not Paul. Guilty. With, I mean, you are. You have a gambling sponsor, and it's I have my a gambling bookie. sponsor. Okay, it's my so, bookie, so, but I'm not okay. guilty. I'm okay, innocent. Neither am I, <laughs> you fucking idiot. Neither am I. That's my that's my fucking point. You're not listening to what I'm saying, Keem. Try to follow what I'm saying. I'm saying if if that's the debate, if it's the morality of gambling and gambling sponsors, then okay, I'll have I'll have that. But the list is a lot longer than me and fucking Steve will do it. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Let me, Logan let Paul me, with Barstool Sports and fucking Conor McGregor saying with, that R- Rubet, yeah. right? They're basically saying that Rubet was funded by. Okay, again, I don't know this stuff. This is not my story, right? This is kind of like what I'm hearing, right? That Rubet was funded by CSGO Gambling, all right, somehow. I, 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 I'm not following it, but okay. okay, somehow. All right, so CSGO Gambling is What the fuck is does that have to anything Rubet. to do with any of us? Okay, and then what was the other thing? It wasn't funded I, by me. It's not my website. Well, okay. They found your like your crypto wallets. Do you know about this? Your crypto <laughs> yeah, wallets. Yeah, I watched. Yeah, I watched Muda Hart. That's why I and, wish you would have just let me finish. So let me get into that. I called Muda, talked to him for an hour and a half. The conversation honestly started out heated because I just didn't appreciate the way that information was delivered. It was honestly light. Like it wasn't. He didn't say anything crazy or damning or whatever. But it's like, dude. Um. So, so. I hit up. I hit up. The it's reason like, why it's, I'm asking, it's just, it's just annoying. I'm, listen, uh, listen, bottom why, line, listen, no, 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 no let me wrap this okay. up. No, you don't fucking oh my God me, bro. Cause you're fucking throwing shit on me. That is, that it's annoying. You're like, you're like, 
No, this is the whole fucking point. I'm riled up about it. It's like I don't have to. I I don't have to fucking answer to every person who wants to point at something and say this could be this. That bro, I've been dealing with it for fucking months for the last eight months with this fucking NFT shit. All this NFT shit is a hundred percent legit. Oh, this NFT just just not even me. The space in general, it's fucking fraudulent and money laundering and uh, I, there's only fucking criminals in crypto and there's only criminals in NFT. It's fucking annoying, bro. And you don't have to fucking answer every fucking moron who wants to fucking point at something and say, this could be sketchy. What I'm saying to you right now is 100% fact. What am I supposed to do? I made a good move. So and it's 100% think, le legitimate. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Why do you think coffee and Muta are like including you going after Rubets? Like what do I think, you I think? I think they're just, I think, I think, I mean, Muta's second part to a six part series was an hour long. Muda and coffee are extremely, um, what's the word? Um, and listen, I don't have anything against them doing their thing. Like, honestly, I don't have anything against them, including me whatsoever. Um, it's, it's the parts where it's like, let's speculate and fucking, it's just, I don't appreciate that. I would just appreciate a fair shake and I'm friends with both these guys. And that's kind of, that was mostly what the conversation with Muda was about. But, um, Muda is very thorough in his like delivering of information when it comes to, shit he's investigating and shit he's diving into. So it would be weird if he didn't include me. It would be strange if he didn't include me because they're talking about Rubet. I have a fucking Rubet tattoo on my leg that I got paid $100,000 for. Um, but uh, no, so when, when me and Muda talked, that's what his whole thing was. I wish we could have brought him on. We tried calling him, like last minute calling yeah, him to get we, him on the show. We did it, we did it I'm not like him running him. from anything. I'm not hiding from anything. I'm just like exhausted with it. It's just like, it's so clear to me what this shit is. And what it is, is 99% of what their issue is and what they're digging into is Rubet as a company for whatever reason. Um, but why, do you, why do you think they're going after Rubets? I, because Steve called coffee a broke idiot loser <laughs> to be <laughs> honest with Steve you for, he's talking about steve from now to be honest i honestly think well, that the, i mean uh, coffee coffee this. admittedly in his video said i probably never would have gone this deep into this if you if you didn't tell me to do my research or whatever he's like so you want to tell me to do my research so i'm going to do my research but it's like i don't know but uh, no i want to finish i want to i want to finish kind of like what the conversation with mudu is about so i mean mudu the, the entire time was like honestly bro like i don't I really don't think you did anything wrong. I just think it's, it's, if, if anything, it's a, just a bad look. You got this money coming in. It's public info. My wallet's public. It's literally phase banks.eth. And this money's coming in from, I guess, a Rubet associated wallet. Um, it's not Rubet's actual wallet, but it's, you know, somebody who's big in that like ecosystem, whatever. I haven't done the deep dive. Like, I don't, I don't like looking at this shit. I asked somebody if I could buy Ethereum off them. 100% legit, legit, like I said, proof of sale, receipts, all that shit, like actual legal receipts. Um, but Mood is like, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious. I mean, dude, we, again, we fucking, we did, we did two trips to Mexico. I think they're trying to make this like crazy connection with this other company that we work with, Wizza, and it's just all like, it's like, it's just all a lot and it seems very, very over the top and extra. But then again, like I said, these aren't my com these aren't my companies. Rubet is not my company. Wizza is not my company. Wizza, we have an active working relationship with, and it's a hundred percent a legitimate company. It's yeah, a, but they're trying to they're trying to allude to the fact that well, they're trying to I guess yeah, allude uh, exactly allude yeah. to the fact like point yeah, well, things it's, and it's, oh, it's, this it's, looks a little weird. This looks a little weird. Well, then they're dude, basically saying that Wizza is being funded by Rubets. Like that's kind of what they're saying. Stop adding the S. It's annoying. Rubet, whatever. Um, and then again, I would ask, what's the issue? Honestly, what's the issue? I don't know what the fucking story is. If you, Keem, you know me. You know how this shit works with brand deals and brands in general. When you work with a brand and they're giving you a bag and they're paying you and you have a relationship like that with them, are you fucking, are you balls deep in like figuring out the, 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 all the mechanics of, of, of the company? No, you do well, your due diligence. Well, you make sure it's a, yeah. You make sure it's a legit. Yeah, exactly. But not you, not yourself, right? Your people. Right. So when I get I the just green trust light, my people exactly. Me so when I get good. the green light from legal and I get the green light from finance, and they say this is a good deal, looks great. If you if you are okay with the terms and you know you have to do X, Y, and Z, and you're receiving, 
you know, one, two, three, boom. That's what I wait for, and that's what we got. And Wiz is 100% a legitimate company, and honestly, the guys that we've worked with have been nothing but amazing. We just gave somebody a fucking Lamborghini two days ago. Completely changed the guy's well, life in New a, Jersey. If it's like, 100% legitimate, then why am I not getting a Lamborghini? Because it's 100% legitimate, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I like, don't know. It's, I keep on getting pressure from people on Twitter to expose Nelk, expose Phase Banks, and expose, I guess, everybody. Expose involved. me, please, somebody. But I don't to know do what it. I'm exposing you for. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't I really don't, get but it. But that's the thing. What, like, from, again, what Muda I guess said. It's, it's bad, right? Because they're saying it's bad because it's offshore gambling site that anybody can make in the okay, country. Okay, in which it's all right, all right. From. So if I go offshore, if I start a company in fucking Sweden, again, I don't even know what the fucking relationship is with these with these brands. We've worked with entirely different people on both. Um, the whole Rubet thing came f completely from Aiden. Aiden was streaming on a totally different site. I think like Rollbits or fucking Stake or one of those sites. He was streaming, getting like one-off deals with them, and dr he must have been doing a good job. Obviously, Aiden's humongous on Twitch, so must have been doing a good job. All these fucking websites start getting in a bidding war with him, and I think there was a screenshot somewhere about him talking to one of them who was pissed off because he took a he took the Rubet deal, right? You've seen mm -hmm. that, yeah. yeah. And there, and he was like, "I'm sorry, Rubet offered more." So these company and and tagged along all his homies, so. Rubet, um, or whatever, fucking Aiden was in charge. Obviously, Aiden's the fucking big fish, right? Obviously, yeah. Aiden's getting paid the most. Obviously, the Aiden's the fucking star of the show when it comes to streaming. And um, like this this Rubet shit kind of came out of nowhere, and it was like, okay, I'm, we're gonna start working with Rubet. We're gonna go to Mexico, do this and that. It lasted for a month, and it just Aiden wanted to stop doing it, and they were cool with that. Whatever. There was no like long term thing. We were kind of just like. You know, taking it month by month. And we decided after the first month that was cool, whatever, but not for us. Aiden didn't want to do it anymore. But so, why, why did you decide not to do it? Aiden didn't want to do it anymore. It was during all that like crazy fucking Aiden's just like, one, the streams are getting boring. And two, I don't want to go to fucking Mexico this often. It's exhausting. And three, it was during all that drama with like train wrecks and H3 and fucking Aiden, all that shit. Aiden's just like, well, I'm, I'm over it. I talked to Steve, right, from Nelk, right? I talked to Steve, will do it. And it's finally here. Untold Stories, Top Moments from Worlds brings you closer than ever to the best players, top moments, and biggest events from all the past League of Legends World Championships. The rise of Faker, the origin of Silver Scrapes, the greatest match ever, and Freak's Basement. We've got all these stories and so much more. Untold Stories, Top Moments from Worlds. Listen for free, exclusively on Spotify. Hi guys, it's Brian. Yep, Brian Baumgartner. But most of you, you know me as Kevin Malone on The Office. Over the years, I've started to wonder why this underdog of a show became one of the biggest shows in television history. And to tell you about it, I'm going back to some old friends. I'm John Krasinski. This is Jenna Fisher. I'm Steve Carell. Ricky Gervais. Ed Helms. Angela Kinsey. My name's Rain Wilson. Listen to An Oral History of the Office for free, only on Spotify. He is like, I give all the money I made away. Like I gave it all away <laughs> and he's been, he's been uploading Which is videos. True. Yeah. I mean, dude, he showed me his bank account and dude, I saw his actual bank account and he claims this is his only bank account. And I, I don't want to say how much is in there, but let me say this much. It's not a lot. It's, it's really, really low. I mean, so the average person, it, it'd be nice. Like you can buy a small car. <laughs> but like, there's not a lot in his bank account and he says he does have some money in crypto, but he's like, dude, I give, I give all my money away. He's like, well, it's the stupid. Money I make he's given away, he's given away a shit ton of money and it's really stupid to keep like a ton of liquid cash anyways. 
I mean, Steve has fucking ownership. I'm assuming, I would assume um, he has ownership in full send at this point. And I know for a fact he has ownership in Happy Dad, which is on a fast track to fucking being at least, I would imagine, a $500 million to a billion dollar company. Um, I don't think he's in trouble. I don't think Steve's in danger of getting, you know, set back to zero and having to restart everything. Steve's in a, a perfectly fine position. But in terms of like, the lifestyle he's been living and like all this charitable shit he's been doing. That's where it all came from, right? From the, from the mouth of CoffeeZilla himself. I wanted to know how the fuck it was possible for Steve to be spending a million dollars in a YouTube video and like frequently like $200,000, this video, $500,000, this video, a million dollars, this video, you know what I'm saying? But they're going to make the argument. Okay. So you're promoting a gambling site. Your fans are now gambling and then they're losing money. And then the gambling site is then giving the money back to the YouTuber. And then the YouTuber is giving the money away. Like I'm the good guy, but it's the money's like really coming from the fans gambling. That's like, I guess their argument. I, I don't okay, know. Okay. Again, circling back to what I originally said, if we want to talk about the morality of, of promoting gambling, I'm here for that, but I'm not going to get into like, it's uh, it's 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 either all okay or none of it's okay. All period. Right, let's change. Subjects, I don't. No. 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 I don't want to change. No. 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 I don't want to change. We, we can stay I, on it. I want, I'm just I want, lost. I, I want. Know what the I want your is. opinion. I want your your opinion on that. Like I said, you, your last and final point. What you just said. Their argument is going to be this. Okay. Then if that's the argument, then the overall the overarching argument isn't a Rubet thing. They don't have a beef with Rubet. They have a beef with gambling, in general. Well, I literally asked. Some ordinary gamers because Keen, and Keen, CoffeeZilla. Keen. Wait, 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 let me finish. Don't, don't interrupt. I, I asked CoffeeZilla. I asked some ordinary gamers. I said, listen, okay, <laughs> I'm sponsored, and by the way, I love them. Uh, I'm sponsored by my bookie. It's sports my bookie's betting, great. and I, I love them to death. Right? I've I worked go, with them there, as well. Is there any issue with my bookie? And they go, no, it's registered in the United States and it's sports betting. It's legal. Their issue, I guess, with Rubet is that it's offshore. It's not legal oh, to gamble okay. in it's, the United States. Okay, or it's something. not legal to gamble in know. the United States and, they, and you can't gamble. from. Go on Rubet.com right now. Even the people listening right now, go on Rubet.com right now and try to gamble. You can't. If you live if in the U.S. In, if you're yeah. in Canada, you can. But if you're in the U.S., you can't. Okay. So I mean, we have I, fans I all over the place. So I have a shit ton of fans in Canada, a shit ton of fans in the UK. I don't know if you can in the UK or not. Um, but and and we when we went, we went to Mexico, bro. Like yeah, we did it. Like I said, I am completely legitimate. The way that the inner workings and mechanics of Rubet.com, I would be lying to you if I told you I fucking stuck my dick balls deep in it and like figured like. No, every I can't speak a hundred percent for it, but I mean Rubet's been around for a lot longer than these other sites like Steak and fucking Rollbits, and I'm not throwing shade or taking shots at them whatsoever either. Um, they all use the if you if you've ever been on these sites, they all have the exact same games. They're clearly basically the same website, just skinned differently. But it's this like giant fucking behind the scenes whatever, like like um what's the word like like software or engine or whatever that they all base their site on so it's mm. like yeah okay. but like again like it's it's what is it because if it's about like the structure of companies neither of these companies are mine um there's a fucking thousand person list of people who work with gambling sponsors and these online casinos and stuff like that and if somebody wants to have a conversation about the morality behind that i can have that conversation and we can duke that out well, and if you if you if your opinion isn't the same as mine that's fine we can agree to disagree but um can i ask like, you a question like i said about Steve, the yeah go ahead steve steve recently like deleted all of his gambling streams and you know like his uh videos gambling and i think his uh his Twitch gambling or whatever. I think it was. something came out about that, about that not being Steve who did that. Well, somebody deleted everything. Yeah. Uh, his whole history online of him, have him online gambling. Again, I would and guess this would so be my guess. Suspicious. I like genuinely, when does I that. genuinely, I genuinely um, have not spoken to Steve about any of this. I've been dealing with my own shit and has zero to do with any of this. Um, but. My best guess would be, like I said, Steve has, you know, a huge role in uh, the Full Send brand and Happy Dad and these very legitimate companies that are fa on fast track to be, you know, worth a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And there's lots of hands at play. There's lots of people involved, lots of big money involved. Um, 
And I would, my best guess would be that his team said, none of this shit's worth it. You know, stop responding, whatever. Because it, that's just, that's, that's the fucking, um, that's the cycle of the internet, right? I, I should fucking, I should take a fucking, take a, uh, take notes. Cause I, I don't do that. Like I'll fucking call, I called Muda right away. Like I'm a fucking open book. I'll talk about this shit all day. I don't care. Uh, let's change gears. Uh, cause I sure. really don't understand this. I Bro, know you that, think I'm coming at you. I'm not, I'm literally asking. No, the it's just, you, you know how it is, ask. man. It's, it's just annoying because I had no issue with any of this. I had no issue with any of it up until that little part where it was like, well, and then banks is getting this and it just leaves it up to speculation. And it's like, dude, like, give me a fucking break. You're busting my balls about nothing. I literally purchased this Ethereum completely legitimately. I bought it. You know how annoying that is? You fucking send out two hundred thousand dollars plus well, to somebody. Stuff like money laundering or something. <laughs> like I don't what? I don't, Where's the I money? Don't what money am I laundering? All my shit's completely legit, bro. Like what? Phase Clan is on a fucking at completely different level, and it's as a legitimate thing as 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 you could possibly fucking find on the internet. And it's like, bro, what the fuck do you guys think this is? Like, please. And it's, okay. it's, it makes me, and that's, that's the point where it's like, dude, like where, like I would, I would have no problem talking to the SEC or any, or anybody about anything. I would say, here's my lawyer. Here's my, here's my accountant. Here's the, here's the fucking team. Do whatever you got to do. Comb through. Boom. Like that's the most important thing. Making sure your shit's legit. Bottom line is I just, I need to, I need to, um, I need to like, have like a closing statement i guess it's so cringe this, this shit's so cringe i need to have um like my little final words on it and it's this it's this simple and it's just because there's a six-part series i can make a fucking six-part series about what i think your nutsack looks like keemstar does that mean awesome. that you're let's does that, that mean that does that mean that your nutsack is there's some crazy deep conspiracy and your nuts are actually fucking not nuts and you actually have a vagina and <laughs> all this time. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, what does that actually really mean? It's like, I don't know. It's bottom line is we did a fucking one month stint um, campaign with Rubet. We got paid for it. We were completely transparent about the fact that we got paid for it. We worked with this brand that is identical to 10 other brands that every fucking Twitch streamer in their mom promotes and streams um and it, it lasted for a month this okay. other company that we work with that that they're making some kind of connection to wizza go do a deep dive on them keem we've done it especially now we've we've redone it it's a completely 100 legitimate <laughs> website it's it's a it's a website very similar Pretty if much the same if as Omaze. It's legitimate. Wiz, uh, sponsor me now. Okay, let's change gears. Let's talk about something else that came up in my news feed recently that I haven't had a, even a chance to talk about on Drama. All right. You obviously know Alyssa Violet, your ex girlfriend, right? And yeah. you you also know uh, Chantel Jeffries, right? And yep. you also know MGK, right? <laughs> yeah, I know so, all these people. And you know all these people, right? We're so, all we're all friends. Yep, you're all friends. Well, all right, I'm so friends we, with all of them. I don't know if they're all friends, but yeah. Well, Al, Chantel Jeffries used to date Machine Gun Kelly, right? That's a that's a thing. Yep. You used to date Alyssa Violet, and Alyssa Violet and Chantel Jeffries were best friends. All right. Now, recently, what happened is there was an Alyssa Violet fan page that jumped in the DMs of Chantel Jeffries and accusing her. Her of name a is bunch for the stuff. listeners, by the way. It's Chantel. <laughs> what was I calling her? Chantel. I don't know some weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> Anyhow, Chantel. Um, responds to the Alyssa fan page and says, the reason why we're not friends uh, has something to do with this and links an MGK music video titled uh, my girl, my ex-girlfriend's best friend or something. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Like bro, she was I, like, bro, bro, to be honest with you, I, I don't know. She I was no, like, I have no idea. Chantel was basically suggesting I, I know, I that know. Alyssa Violet hooked up with MGK. So then I hit up Alyssa today. I talked to her today and she's like, yeah, I didn't do anything with MGK. I have no idea what that's about. And she said other stuff, but I can't say because it's off record. I'm confused. Why are those two not friends? 
Um, I know why they're not friends. It's not my business to talk about, but I will say this MG, this new MGK development, they haven't been friends for like over a year. Um, this MGK development, I this is the first I've heard about it. I mean, okay. he's a good friend of mine. I don't think that he'd do me like that, but who knows? You never really know. There's fucking fake people crawling all over the place, but he's he's always been super fucking... Well, Lissa super, says it's not true, one. so it's... I don't know. I, don't, I, I could not possibly... The only fucking two people who could possibly know if that's true or not are Alyssa and Coulson, right? Mm. So I, I don't really get too hung up on shit like that and drive myself crazy on shit like that. And I also... Quite frankly, don't give a fuck. But why Alyssa, are those two not friends? I'm so confused. Um, like I said, I know why, and I've heard from both of them, from both sides, why they're not friends um, separately, and both of their stories kind of match up. Is it guy, guy issues? I'm not going to speak on their business. Okay, so it's guy if issues, they wanna, people. If they want to talk about it, they can talk about it. But um, I will say this is the first I've heard about MGK, so okay. for what that's worth. Um, and I really am close with these people. Like these people are my friends, but I'm not going to speak on their business. It's stupid. Um, it's a, it's honestly a shame to see them not be friends because they were really good friends. You never like to see that. Um, Banks, but I, don't, I, don't I don't know if you honestly gears it, again. Oh, hold ahead. on, no, no, no. I want to, I want to finish it out. Alyssa and I, we talked about this on the last show. Um, just kind of rekindled our friendship. We've been like hanging out and not in like a weird like sex way or like a fucking you know romantic way. We're both very on the same page. Like. Hey, we're friends. Like we know everything about each other. And Keem, we've always talked about this. Like you guys were the best of friends. You guys yep. were like so fun to be around together. And you guys are like just two peas in a pod. But sometimes, you know, you can't date everyone you're friends with. Um, yeah. We did for a while and it worked for a while too, but it's just like, it's just not it. Uh, we both got into uh, relationships, uh, really serious relationships after each other. And we both got, you know, through those breakups um, and we kind of went through the whole cycle of love and relationship after each other. So I think that helped a lot in like making it okay to like see each other and be friends, you know? Cause it's like a big part of like breaking up and why it fucking sucks so bad is like, you have that feeling of like, fuck man, like I'm never going to find that again. Everyone's felt that anyone who's ever been in a relationship has felt that Kim, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like that hopelessness, like fuck, like fresh off the breakup, like dude, like I found my person. I found a person who like I could fully open up to who really gets me, who I fuck with everything about. And I'm never going to find that again. And it's, it sucks. And it, it you know, it causes like a, a pain, you know, in your fucking soul to even see them. So you don't want to see them and shit gets toxic. And like, you know, you just, you don't, you feel, you have a negative feeling about them after that. Um, no matter what side of the breakup you're on, it's just a weird, icky, shitty feeling. Um, but I think after you go and find that again and go through that same like shitty feeling again with somebody else, it's like, Oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, let's online. fucking, let's shift gears and talk about you for a second. You fuck. What do you want to talk about? Bro. What's been up with you? You've been bummed. Honestly, like, I don't, I wouldn't say depressed. Depressed is the wrong word, but I'm just like down. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like depressed is like the extreme version of being down, but I'm just kind of down in general. I'm just Why? not happy. I'm just, I'm not happy online anymore. Like I'm trying to make people, you know, troll people, make them mad, get them up in arms and it's working and stuff, but it's just not as fulfilling as it used to be. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of people said that I'm like stuck in this 2016 mindset. I'm like, but that's when it was fun. The internet's not fun now. It's like everyone's lame and boring. Everyone's cringe. Like every single person is cringe online. <laughs> I can't deal with it. That's why you ask me constantly, why don't you spend more time online? Why don't you make more content? It's just not like, I don't, I don't gain a whole lot from that. Like, like as a person, I don't know. I'd much rather work on like other shit. It's a lot more fun and fulfilling for me. And just, part I like participating in people's content yeah. and shit, like hopping in a video, helping with the phase shit like shit like that's cool like still like um applying like what you know and like your your um like like just the tools that you've you've fucking created throughout the years i like doing that have you watched uh, squid game it's such a good fucking show oh it's so good did you see the uh the chick i think her name's ho yan jung or some shit no. um she's like the chick from it she's the fucking she's so fucking sick She's yeah. so fucking hot. Yeah, yeah. But um yeah. but she um 
she came out and she came out in an interview and said um, she's been like religiously watching Phase Mongrel Phase Mongrel streams, and she what? thinks every, and she thinks everyone should watch him. Yeah, you didn't see that Phase tweet. No, it. that's sick. so fire, so fire. Well, um, you know what? Ever, as soon as Squid Game became or Squid Game became popular, like there was this meme going around that Mr. Beast needs to recreate Squid Game, <laughs> and so like listen to this earlier today. No, I, I saw a TikTok. I saw a TikTok of. Yep. Uh, like a squid, like all the squid, like the squid game shit going down. But Mr. Beast being like, I have all this money, $40 billion, like whatever. <laughs> There's going to be one winner. So, buddy. So Mr. That'd Beast be himself so- uploaded a TikTok today. And he said, if I get 10 million likes on this TikTok, I'm going to recreate squid game. And I shit you not in a couple hours, it had four fucking million likes. I probably has 10 million by now. But that's just in insanity. That's such an and, obvious move for him. I, I'm sure right when all the... I mean, that's just the way Mr. Beast fucking... That's just how he moves and the way his brain works. I'm sure right when all this Squid Game hype was was blowing up, he, uh, he started making plans to recreate the shit. Okay, I'm looking at it right now. It has 7.8 million. So if it's not at 10 yet, get over to TikTok, go to Mr. Beast's page. and, and I don't like spend that. a lot of time on TikTok. Is that like a like tremendous crazy disgusting amount of likes uh seven million likes yeah i don't know that's like insane i know the numbers on tiktok are fucking wacky and crazy and like really really high i just didn't know i just dude he has almost eight million likes on a on a tiktok that's like a day old like that's insanity that's <laughs> that's literally insanity. Yeah, it, sound, it sounds nuts it's mr beast he's the king yeah. he's king but um, so I tweeted about it and I was like, you guys better get over to TikTok and you better like Mr. Beast's TikTok, right? And people are like, dude, this is clickbait. And I'm like, what are they talking about? It's clickbait. And he's like, Mr. Beast better actually start killing people. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Could you imagine? You click on the imagine family Mr. friendly. Beast just shoot somebody in the fucking head. He, he has a team of snipers out there just like actually murdering other YouTubers participating in Squid Game. <laughs> I could see them doing it with like paintball guns or something though. Yeah, but the thing is, is everyone's already done it with paintball guns. I just seen a video today where the people are recreating. Listen, it's actually- Mr. Beast. It's Mr. Beast. He'll figure out a way to like really do it on a grand level. He's gonna get four hundred and fifty six people actually, and he's gonna make the prize money like a million dollars guaranteed. Yeah, but wasn't it forty million or something or forty billion or some crazy amount? Forty billion won, which is I wonder how much money that is. We should look that up just I'm so about, people I'm, can a, know. I'm about to talk about something while I do this. Okay. So um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the greatest games of all time. Even now with brand That's new boring. consoles That's being boring. out. That's boring. PlayStation 40, 5. 40 billion, 40 billion won is 33 million US dollars. So yeah, no Damn. fucking shot. No shot anyone's winning that. But um, I mean, he could, he could do it. He's got the money for it. Buddy, he... No. Nobody's spending $33 million on a YouTube production. Not even Mr. Beast. A and, if he d- and if he does, I'll suck my own dick on Instagram Live. You heard it right there, Mr. Beast. Make sure it's $33 million for the pack. For the That'd be crazy. Prize. Nah, but I'm sure he'll do like a million. I'm sure he'll do a, a million bucks, which is crazy. You're turning somebody into a millionaire. But um, no, That's wild. How come Mr. Beast doesn't uh, get in trouble for gambling? <laughs> Does he gamble? <laughs> yeah, he took all the money he's ever made and put it back into his videos. That's a gamble. Well, bro, this is the thing. Like, there's there's like easier targets. That's the thing. Like, I even said this too. Again, I appreciate coffee and I appreciate Muda and I I I, I fuck with those guys. And I honestly, I know that they're honest guys because we've talked on and off the record. <gasps> and they're like, they've treated me honestly and fairly. To be honest, like. I've never felt like fucked over by them or whatever. Obviously I talked to these guys a lot during all the, you know, the, the, the K drama, um, and worked with them through that shit. But like, I don't know. It's like some of the, sometimes I I said this too. And I, I criticized this, like that low hanging fruit, like Logan Paul's NFT project, like, What's the issue, dude? What's the problem? Well, and I think the problem it, is, is he was the Logan artwork, Paul, right? <laughs> well, Logan Paul told everyone he spent a million dollars on his project and it seems impossible. <laughs> it, bro, it's not, it's not it, like, what do you mean? It's 
but it seems impossible doesn't mean it is impossible. It and you doesn't don't mean know, that it is. And you it don't know what it impossible. takes. You don't know what it takes to build out the tech and shit like that. Like we talked about this on the podcast, but I'll say it again. You got to understand the people in this NFT space are making money hand over fist. You're not just hiring a fucking random kid off the street to figure this shit out. You're going, he's probably going directly to the top, the best people in the business. And I wouldn't be surprised if the people who built it out like this, it actually sounds a little low because Keem, usually the way that this shit works is you, your dev and tech team, you split, you split the project with them 50, 50 usually, right? That's usually how it works. You build it out. I mean, in Logan Paul's case, he could probably get away with something less, but probably somewhere along the line of like 15, 20%. And if he's paying up front and they know what they're building is going to make in net, you know, $10 million, they're not going to fucking accept anything less than a million dollars to build that out because they could just do it themselves and make that money themselves. You know what I'm saying? Banks, what do you think the next uh, wave is, right? Like, dude, the NFT, crypto, all that. I mean, I can't. I don't, next I, don't, I don't have a fucking crystal ball. It's just when I see it, when I see it, I, I'm confident that I'll know it, but I haven't seen anything. I'm like, I'm still up, up. I'm still super deep in the fucking NFT rabbit hole. That's where my focus has been, and it's been mad fun. I've had so much fun with it. I'm learning so much. I'm meeting so many fucking people. There's a bunch of like big did NFT. You, did you finally stop drinking and partying nonstop? Because last couple of times, like the last month I've spoken no, to you, you've been no, on a bender. No, I'm on a little bit of a bender. I'm going through it on a personal level, but I don't, really don't even want to talk about that online. I want to keep it kosher and keep it, keep it cool. You just go through shit like that in life sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I fuck get it. I'm it. I always now. get anxiety. I, all I, I want to do is drink. I always get anxiety. And listen to the listeners at home. Like that shit only makes it worse. Just know that, like, again, like I'm not, I'm no fucking role model, man. Like, if you want to take, there's nothing wrong with taking bits and pieces of things from people and like, and looking up to that. You know, like the shit that I've done with Phase, I'm super proud of that. I would, I would, I would never steer anybody away from like. <clears throat> following that same path and and following my footsteps and something like that you're passionate about, you want to fucking commit your life to it and build it up, I, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, run that. It changed my whole life. I wouldn't trade it for the fucking world. Uh, the NFT shit, like shit like that, like positive stuff like that. And I'd like to think I'm a good person and I treat people well too. I like when, you know, I get that feedback in my day-to-day life. Like, yo, I love your energy and I love the way you interact with people and treat people. That shit's cool. But just because... There are cool parts about me. doesn't mean every part about me is cool. doesn't mean you, you latch on to and look up to everything that I do. And um, my relationship with alcohol and partying and stuff like that probably is not one of them. It's incredibly unhealthy. But we're all fucking figuring it out. Everyone has their shit, even us. You know what I mean? Um, and on that note, we're going to see you guys next week. Um, the emoji this week is a uh, nice tall beer. Let's do the beer emoji. Um <laughs> Because drinking's fire, and I'm going to, right after this, it's Aiden's 21st birthday. I'm going to start pre-gaming. We're going to fucking, I'm not even going to say the club. I guess this is going to air after, but. Um, it's going to air after. We're going what crazy. Club are you going to? It's, Aiden's, it's Aiden's 21st birthday. Um, I'm excited. Guys, we don't, get, we don't get any feedback on Spotify. We don't have a comment section. So we ask that you guys tweet myself and Keemstar uh, with an emoji. Spam the emoji so we can kind of differentiate the uh, the comments and feedback from the show and just our day-to-day tweets. We both get a lot of tweets. Um, So yeah, let's do the beer emoji. It's funny. All right, guys, we will see you next week. And uh, we are going to have a guest, right? Banks. Like we are going to have a guest. Yeah. We're going to have a guest. (laughs) We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.